In announcing the new measures to limit the spread of COVID-19, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley said the sector that provides the heartbeat of the Twin Island Republic's economy must keep going. The essentials should stay in place. As you may recall, when we started out in January last year, we made it quite clear that because of the level of dependence on the energy sector, we will keep that sector open and do what has to be done. And thank God we did it. We had one or two instances of infections on platforms and so forth. By and large, we kept that section wide open. Last week, Energy Matters reported that BPTT said testing of offshore personnel and primary contacts had returned a total of 42 positive cases at its offshore facilities, as it confirmed there had been no further COVID-19 positive cases among personnel on its offshore platforms since April 15. Shell Trinidad and Tobago told the Express newspaper that 12 persons working on an offshore platform had tested positive for COVID. Shell and BPTT statements were made before the new lockdown announced by the Prime Minister last week. The second since the first COVID-19 case was confirmed in Trinidad and Tobago on March 12th of last year. Trinidad and Tobago's energy sectors comprised of the state-owned oil company Trinidad Petroleum's Holding Limited and its four subsidiaries, two of which are in operation as the refinery in Point of Pier remains closed pending sale or lease. The Nikon Gas to Liquids plant, where an explosion occurred last month, is in operation in Point of Pier. The energy sector is also comprised of upstream companies that conduct oil and natural gas exploration on and offshore, such as those owned by BP and Shell. And then there's the midstream state-owned national gas company, which buys gas from the upstream companies, which it sells to the downstream petrochemical companies, such as those that produce ammonia, methanol, and urea in Point Lisas. The energy sector employs locals as well as foreigners, often called expats. In that regard, Energy Matters posed the question to the recently appointed National Security Minister, Fitzgerald Hines, during a news conference on Sunday about the exemptions to be approved by him for locals and foreigners returning to Trinidad and Tobago. In the context of persons entering Trinidad and Tobago via that border exemption process, either for repatriation flights or persons who are not nationals but may be employed in, let's say, the energy sector and, and getting these exemptions, how is the government ensuring that we are not finding ourselves as a country in a, in a situation where you may be unduly importing uh, through the legal process uh, COVID and the P1 or any other variants? A genuine thought. Um, I have myself, since I've sat in this chair, uh, signed some of those exemptions, and I have observed that they are all issued with some very strict conditions. In terms of the oil and gas industry, some of them are allowed into our jurisdiction but are not allowed even to leave the boat or to leave the platform. Minister Hines also said non-nationals, such as those employed by the local energy sector, must provide proof that they are free of COVID-19. And that is on every occasion that they come, and we know exactly. So we have these protocols and controls because that too is advised by the experts in the Ministry of Health. We do nothing without the advice of those experts. Jewel Brown for Energy Matters.